church say amen. amen. Why don't we give God a hand clap of praise? He is worthy to be praised. Oh, how thankful we are yes, sir. to be back with you again. Amen. Give him a little rest, but I'm feeling good. Amen. I am feeling good. How are you feeling this morning? Let me read this. Let me read this right quick. Thank you. Two small words for such a big feeling. To Pastor Green of Mount Zion Church family, your kindness really made a difference. Your thoughtfulness really touched my heart. Gratitude, I feel, really can't be put into words. Brother Ed and Sister Alice Stafford. Amen. God bless you. Let us also keep our own Sister Ruthie Doherty and Brother Carl Michael Williams and family in prayer. God is good all of the time. Please pray for yourselves, pray for other family, pray for Pastor and his family. Amen. Let's pray ye one for another. Let us look to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We lift you on high. Oh, how worthy is your name to be praised. God, you brought us from a mighty long way. You kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. If it had not been for you, Lord, where would we be? Father, we know that you are God. And beside you, there is none other. Father, continue to bless our land. Father, continue to keep us in your care. Father, every home that's represented here, those that are still home, Father. We ask that you would hold them in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Those with the underlying conditions that cannot go out. Yes. Father, we ask that you keep them. Yes. Is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. And for his sake, we also pray. Amen. Amen. Also, before we move on, I want to publicly, he's not here yet, but publicly thank Reverend Slaughter. Amen. 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 Our own Reverend Wilborn was working, he could come, but I, I thank Reverend Slaughter from Amen. the bottom of my heart. Amen. But I did call him and inform him that Mount Zion have a pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, he did a, a great job. Amen. And you always want to thank God for those men who step up to the plate to do what they need to do. Amen. We are just glad to be with you. Pray for uh, my daughter, Lakeidra. She's been having pains in her side, and we're going to get that checked out. But uh, God is good. Come on, God is good. Come on, God is what? All of the time. Amen. Let me do this while I uh, they are getting set up, and I, I believe in following the Spirit of God. Uh, our own brother Joe wanted to testify briefly on what he's been through and what God has brought him through, and while they are setting up, we're going to give him that time. Amen, brother. Come on. Come on. Christian journey that 
It's not going to be easy. All right. Tem temptation is on every side. Yes, sir. Yes, but what I also learned is you got to hold on to God unchanging hands. Yes, sir. Because what I've learned through poor pit leaders like my pastor, Roger Green, that it's victory in his name. Yeah. It's hope in his name. Yeah. Yes, sir. And he shall overcome. As for Joe Lewis here, Junior, I am a victim to uh, temptation. And I have seen both sides. Here by yourself, bro. Sides where there's victory and where there's no victory. Right. And I also have been a part of that in between. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here by yourself. But um, I'm here to testify this, this morning that God is good. Awesome. Yes, and For those who might need a little extra push like I need here and there all the time. You never know until you try. So that's what I did and I just wanted to let Mount Zion members and everybody know that um, you know, I am still holding fast and holding on to his unchanged name. Amen. Amen. Brother Joe, let's give him another hand. God is good. All of the time. All right. Our ministers of music, they are here. They're ready to minister to us through song. Let us continue to pray for Sister Yolanda Burns and her family for they had death in their family. But God is still good. Sister Gibson, God bless you. Had death in her family, but God has brought. There he go. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Slaughter, for what you've done for us. Let's hear our ministers of you.
with the troubles of this world, troubles of this world, troubles of this world. So no will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going. of the cross 
is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, right. it is the power of God. I want to talk about a good battery but a bad connection. A good battery but a bad connection. Everybody have seen the Energizer battery commercial. Yes, sir. The little bunny appears to be beating his drum. And the announcer says he's still going. Yes, sir. And on he goes across the deserts, across the mountains, across lonely highways and nothing seems to stop this little bunny from going. Yes, sir. And we need to know what the point of the commercial is. It's not the bunny. It's the bad. Yes, and the reason why the bunny is able to keep going in spite of what's in front of him because he's connected to a good battery. And it's important to have good batteries because weak batteries can cause problems. Cause weak batteries have problems starting. Uh, those who remember back in the day when we had Walkmans and tape recorders that used batteries, if the batteries weren't good, the sound would drag. Flashlights with weak batteries go dim. Batteries and cell phones, if they're not working properly, will eventually disconnect themselves from the network. But even a good battery is half of the solution. There must be a good connection. There was a woman who woke up one cold, crisp morning and when she would put the key in the ignition, it would just give a clicking sound. And so she was able to call uh, the mechanic and she said, my battery is no good. And when he tested the battery, he said, ma'am, the battery is good. You just got a bad connection. For those of you hollering about God ain't good. God is good. You the one just got a bad connection. Even sick, God is good. Even in the midst of sorrow, God is good. When you don't know how you're going to pay your bills next week, I can still say God is good. But preacher, how can you shout when you're broke and don't know how you're going to pay your bills because I'm connected to a good battery? And when you're connected to the power source, it won't let you be still. How many can testify this morning that I'm connected to a good battery? The connection is good. It makes me wave my hand and when nothing is wrong. It makes me cry when I'm not even sad. It makes me run when nothing is behind me. Y'all have to excuse me. I ain't preached in two weeks and I'm, I'm built up. My source is built up and I'm connected to a good battery. So, preacher, how, how do I keep this connection strong? Number one, write this down. How do I keep my connection strong? Number one, you got to avoid corrosion. This power source is of little value at all if the connection gets rusty and corroded. Yes, you see, corrosion causes bad connection. Yes, and there are too many believers who go through life hearing the clicking sound and think something's wrong with God. You pray and you haven't gotten an answer, that's a clicking sound. You're wondering how people are praising God and you're going through all this going on and you can't pray God, that's just a clicking sound. It's nothing wrong with God. You just got a bad connection. You see, you want God to answer your prayer, but you want God to answer your prayer your way. God doesn't work that way. How I many can 
and testify and said, I once had a click. But a divine mechanic came and he cleaned my cable. And I realized there was nothing wrong with the power soul. I just had a bad connection. Many of us have the ability to achieve greatness through the gifts God has given us. But there's just a clicking sound. In the text, Paul writes to the church of Corinth about the wisdom of preaching, the truth of the cross of Christ. Paul explains to those who are saved that recognize that the cross is the symbol of the power of God, that Christ died, that we all may have a right to the tree of life. But he says in the text, but those who are not saved, this preaching is foolishness. What foolishness that Paul speaks of? Well, for those that are lost, loving your enemies is foolish. Praying for those who despitefully use you is foolish. Loving those who are setting traps for you is foolish. Praising a God that you can't see is foolish. Giving a tide and don't know where it's going is foolishness. But when you trust God, it ain't foolishness, y'all excuse me, I ain't worried, but it ain't foolishness to the children of God. I may not be able to see God with my eyes. I might not be able to live physically to feel God with my hands. But guess what? I can feel it moving in the wind. I can see the evidence every time a limb leaning over from when I can't see. I know that there's a God somewhere. How you know, preacher? Somebody woke me up this morning and it wasn't the alarm clock. Somebody touched me this morning and I was able to know my left from my right. It wasn't nothing that I've taken or nothing that I, I was so good. It was just that power. So how many can testify that I am depending so, depending on them to do what for your preacher to carry me through yeah, yeah, yeah. to heal my body yeah. to continue to put food on my table yeah. clothes on my back yeah. if it had not been yeah. for the Lord yeah. those yeah. who are lost the text says that the preaching of this gospel is foolishness and you have to avoid that kind of corrosion Singing and praying, Brother Joe, and testifying in other forms of worship, the world say we are foolish. They say we crazy to walk into a church in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah. People are dying. They say we crazy to sit every other pew and with masks on, but they're not crazy to go everywhere. Else. But we crazy to trust God. You don't know if the manager of Walmart is an atheist or not, but you still go. You don't know those at the casino or love God or not, but you still go. So why when it comes to God, this is foolishness? Baby, it's not foolishness to praise a God that brought me through. It's not foolishness to wave my hand in the sanctuary and lift up my voice towards heaven and tell God, thank you for what all you've done for me. Preacher, you've just been down for two weeks and you mean to tell me you still trust in God? You want to know why? I got a good connection. With that connection, I find ability, strength, and power. But you have to avoid Things that will corrode your connection. Envy will corrode that connection. Hatred will corrode that connection. Jealousy. 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 Because I can't sing like my sister. I ain't going to get up and praise God. Because the Brooks didn't let me lead this weekend, this week. I ain't going to bless her. Look, it ain't about who's leading. It ain't about who grabbed the mic. If you really want to sing, just lift up your voice. Can't nobody stop you from singing. 
You don't have to lead all the time to sing praises to God. When you woke up this morning, there wasn't no choir in your house. Didn't you say, precious Lord, take my hand? There wasn't no choir in your house when he healed your body in the hospital. There wasn't no choir in the room with you. So why you need a whole group of people to praise God? I can praise him all. Now, how can you do that, Reverend? Because I got a good connection. Hallelujah. Your connection is corroded. If you need a house full of people to thank God. People are asking me, Brother West, preachers called me and they would ask me, say, Reverend, when the pews were empty, when there wasn't nobody in the church but God in you, and you still preach as though the church was packed. I said, what you mean as though the church was packed? I said, I don't need people to sit on the pew to say I got a packed church. When the Holy Spirit is all over the place. Many of us. It is that power source that energizes us to keep on going and going and going. If you're slowful about going, Maybe you are hooked up to a bad battery. Now there are all types of batteries, but there are only a few good batteries. A dollar store battery can't do what a Duracell can. See, you hooked up the dollar store batteries. They only keep you for a little while, and then they die. I wish I had somebody to test it. You see, people who come to church and quit, dollar store bad. People who get mad at the preacher because he stepped on your toes through the word of God, dollar store bad. Those who are trusting casino and won't trust God, dollar store bad. Those who got pickers and choosers who they gonna praise with, dollar store bad. But when you hooked up to a good bad, a doer say or energize. Yeah. It don't make a difference who's singing, just who they're singing about. Yeah. When I hear the name of Jesus, I an infidel can say Jesus, and I got to testify. He's so good to me. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You're hooked up yeah. to the wrong song. Yeah. And watch this. Yeah. People who are hooked up to the wrong song, they are trying to use a six volt transistor. Uh -oh. To empower a 12 volt understanding. Okay. Lord have mercy. That means that many of God's created people are depending on their own skills and their own education and think that's enough to get them by. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to push you for education. Get all you can because you need it to survive on this world. But don't get so educated. That you believe that that's the only thing going to carry you through. Right. I don't care if you got a doctorate degree. It ain't going to heal your body. Yeah. I don't care if you got a doctorate degree. It ain't going to comfort you when all your friends have forsaken you. Yeah. How many can testify that sometimes in life I had no other choice but to depend on God and God all by himself? Right. Sometimes you try, but your battery is too weak. It cannot move on. So not only you got to avoid corrosion, but then you got to avoid bad connection. Now, in order to keep the energy from the power source, you got to make sure that your connection is right. You can have a good battery, but if the connection is wrong, you won't feel the power from the battery. And since we're talking about connecting to a power source, you must determine what type of connection are you. Yes, sir. There are two types of current. There's AC and DC. AC is alternating Christians. They come to church on alternating Sunday. They praise God in alternating circumstances. <laughs> They hooked up to an alternating current. They, they pray on alternating occasions. 
they tied on alternating occasions. They come to church, they love people only when people love them back. That's AC. But then there are a DC. Dedicated Christians. These are the folk who praise God regardless of the circumstances. These are the folk who won't let nobody hinder them from their worship. These are the folk, even if they got to scream through a mass, they gonna let their voices be heard. How many can testify and say, can't nobody stop my prayer? What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Now if you DC, somebody ought to say hallelujah. Now if you DC, you should have enough energy to stand on your feet. If you DC, you ought to be able to wave your hand. Now it ain't my fault if you AC. That means you got to be pushed and pulled. But if that, if you don't have a dollar store battery, it should make you do something even when you don't feel like it. Have you ever came to church when you didn't feel like going? Because that battery wouldn't let you keep seated. that are DC are pressing towards the mark yes, yes, the prize of a high calling yes, in Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, now, you have a good battery. Yes, yes. Got to make sure that the cables are good. Yes, sir. There's still one more thing you need to know. Oh, Not only should you have a good battery and good cables, <laughs> Come on now. but you got to make sure they're tight. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Just because the cable is good and the battery is good, if it's not tight, if it's not, well, here we go, church, holding on, it does you no good. You're doing the right thing. You come to the church. You're doing the right thing. You meditate every night and day. You're doing the right thing. You're giving God to 10%. You're praising God. You're worshiping Him. But, but that's a good cable. But then it's not tight. Because when the going gets rough, you get going. You see, when things are hard, the only thing that keeps us is that we're holding on to God's unchanging hand. How many can testify that I've been through so much hell? And if I wouldn't have held on, I would have been dead sleeping in my grave. Have you ever had a domino effect in your life? It's like hell came from north, south, east, and west. From behind, from in front, from the left, from the right. And seemed like you wasn't going to make it. But the more it came, the tighter you held on. And even in the midst of all of that hell, you still had joy in your heart. You still had a praise on your lips. Hallelujah. It must be tight to the post of the back. Paul said, I won't let nothing separate me from the love of God. What can corrode our connection? Pride can corrode your connection. Unforgiveness can corrode your connection. Every time there's a conflict, your name is always in the middle of it. That can corrode your connection. My brothers and sisters, I never forget one thing about our coach. We couldn't afford to do it. Sometimes we couldn't afford to go to the mechanic. Yes, sir. We would get a hot Coke yes, <laughs> and pour it on the battery cake. Yes, and that hot Coke yes, would get between the battery yes, and the pole. Yes, and it began to eat up yes, that corrosion. Yes, oh, y'all see, I ain't to y'all rich folks don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about us poor folks. We couldn't pour it. We just got a hot coat. Y'all watch this. Don't miss your praise cue. It pulled it over there. It, it ate it up. You can see the corrosion bubbling. And then it will be clean enough to get a tight connection. 
See, you connected, but there's something between you and the post. God that sometimes got to pull something hot on you. Just to eat up that corrosion. How many of them justified? Sometimes God allowed me to get in some hot water just to make me better. See, the reason why so many of us don't take too much to shout because we didn't been in that situation. We didn't been under unfavorable circumstances. And God came in, dropped a little something hot on us, and we thought he was being mean, but all the time he was cleaning us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let me make my last point. We out of here. You got the board corrosion, you got the board a bad connection. But then thirdly and finally, you got to make sure you're properly grounded. Both cables are connected along with the hot wire. That's called a ground cable. Somebody today is trying to put a prayer through, but you're not properly grounded. Some of us are trying to get a praise through, but you're not properly grounded. How do I get properly grounded, preacher? Well, once I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, yes, then I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Then I abide in his word, and his word abide is in me. Then now I can say I am properly grounded. Yes, sir. My brothers and sisters, ground yourself in the belief that Christ is alive and well. Yes, Ground yourself in the belief that he did go to the cross. Yes, that he did hang on the cross. Yes, he went in a cold grave. Yes, he stayed there three days and three nights, but y'all know what happened yes, early the third day morning. Yes, my power source. Yes, my energizer. Yes, yes, my Duracell. Yes, yes, got up not with some power. You see, it took some power to stand at a man's grave and call his name and the dead came forth. It took some power to stand on the hull of a ship in the midst of a storm. To say peace, be still. It took some power for a woman to grab the hem of his garment and a 12 year old bloody issue dried up and the woman was made whole. It took some power to rub spittle and mud on a man's eyes. Telling the Lord to the pool of the salon and wash. And the blind was made to see. It took some power to make deaf ears hear. It took some power to make dumb men talk. It took some power to grab a little boy's lunch and feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. It took some power to walk on a stormy river. It took some power to turn water into wine. It took some power to put his hand on a little girl and say, tell us to come. And the little girl arose from the dead. But Sunday morning, it wasn't some power. He got up with all power in his hand. You don't need to go to Walmart to tap into this power. But that before, there was a 36 month good year source. Before Napa had a 40 month power supply. Before Sears and Roebuck gave you a 60 month guaranteed source. Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, was the battery that the world needed. From Malachi to Matthew, there was a bad connection for 400 years. 
God had did all he could for man, but blood was required. Jesus said, Father, prepare me a body. Give me a 33-year tenure, and I'll go down and I'll clean those cables. I'll go down and I'll move the corrosion. I'll go down I'll tighten up the post. And when Jesus died, he was cleaning the corrosion. When Jesus died, he was tightening up the post. And he put man's hand back in the Lord's hand. And I'm glad to tell you, Mount Zion this morning, I'm connected to the right battery. I'm connected to a battery that'll make me run when nobody's behind it. It'll make me shout when I even don't feel like it. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice can testify and say, Preacher, I am connected. Preacher, I don't mind praising him. He's been good to me. He brought me from a mighty long way. Is there anybody here? No, the Lord is able. Is there anybody here? No, he can make a way out of no way. Is there anybody here who's not ashamed to pray to my God? Ain't he worthy to be praised? Do you know him? Tell somebody. He's been good to me. He brought me from a mile away. Oh, he walks with me. He calls with me. He holds me in the palm of his hand. Is he all right? Do you know who he is? If you connect it to the right battery, you can't keep steam. You like that bunny? Rain may fall, winds may blow, but I'm gonna keep on going. Is there anybody here? Gonna keep on going. No matter what I face, no matter how hard I cry. Our last appeal. 
you need where you are from. You want to get connected to this power source. He's right there. God's unchanging hand. Oh. yours or accept or reject I pray if you didn't come and know you should have that God will give you another chance and give you another opportunity as we prepare to commune Father we ask that let every man, woman, girl, boy examine themselves to see that they are worthy and the only thing they need to examine to make sure that they are connected to you by accepting you as a personal sin. For any sin you commit on the moral level, you are able to forgive us, yes, to wash us, make us better. We thank you and we lift you up in Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen. As you prepare to take the Lord's Supper, will I some it ran short, but that's okay. We do in remembrance of him. He took bread, he broke it. He blessed it and said, it's a symbol of my body which will be broken for me, ripped and torn. Do in remembrance of me and they did me. The cup consisted of the food of the vine, some of my blood that will be shed in remissions of sins. Drink in remembrance of me and they did drink. As often as you do this, you show forth my death, my burial, my resurrection, till I come again. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Those names that we mentioned earlier, let's continue to pray for those families Amen. that God will bless you. Let us stand. I personally want to thank all of you for your love and concern, your prayers, your love gifts, your texts. It was very much appreciated during our time of rest. We thank you. Mm -hmm. In the midst of confusion. Father, we thank you. We lift you on high. Now, may the grace of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, with the rest rule abide henceforth and forevermore. The church respond by saying, Amen. Everyone, please be seated. The ushers will dismiss you that we don't bunch up at the door. Thank you. Let us pray for 
our own brother Dexter Sapp, he had to leave his son, he had to take his son there to the hospital. Uh, we'll keep you up on that. Amen. Ursus, you're in charge. 